That's interesting. I find this interesting. Prince William calls and Gaza fighting as soon as possible. This was not a fighting. Bizarre. This was not a fighting. This was an onslaught. This was not a fighting. And the British royals were at the center of it. The British royals were the main supporter of Gaza onslaught. Not for the last 20 years, but since the Israel was created. And the onslaught did not go also only in Gaza, but the onslaught went on under the very strict British royal guidance inside of the greater than Great Britain, as it what became Britain. They were the one they replaced, systematically have replaced entire British police force in respect to coming Gaza on slot is one of the things, and have also organized counter-protests against pro-Palestinian uh, people in Britain. That's one thing. So this is bizarre. And it is coming in the midst of what you see here. Nigel Farage tells Prince William to stick to the BAFTA is after Gaza intervention. Does anybody know what BAFTA is? Because I don't know. That's some kind of British uh, film awards. Nice. Well, for some people, life is moving. I want to go back and discuss the first issue. It concerns Donald Trump. It surprised me when I asked Donald Trump during MK Ultra. How come he sees himself in Alexei Navalny since Alexei Navalny is support is an opposition you know, during MK Ultra he was an opposition to Vladimir Putin. And he answered to me, I do not. And with the, in front of the Putin, the conversation took place in front of the Putin. With Putin's permission, which it doesn't make any difference in my eyes, the two, Vladimir Putin and Alexei Navalny, had exactly the same masters. And those masters are located in greater than Great Britain, they are located in United States of America. That's called the Central Intelligence Agency, that if you ask me. Because even what I stated to you right now doesn't have absolutely anything to do with the video I will be stressing to you about today. Because everything you see here today was a subject to MKUltra, absolutely everything including the Trident, Misfire in Florida. Uh, everything was a subject to all this, all of the above was involved in MKUltra. What, what's the difference now about it all? What's, what exactly is this about? What is this stuff about? What's like, well, the purpose of this movie, the purpose of this video is to set the people on the right mind, the right track because of repeated lie in the mainstream media. That's the main purpose of it. With the news like this, it's hard to know who is who and who is what. So that's why I want to straight the things up so that historically will be locked by me, by Ausitz Bushyan, Bastian Auser, exactly about what went on and who represents exactly what. In respect to Vladimir Putin, when it comes to Central Intelligence Agency, it was Dmitry Medvedev who was convincing me, yeah, because I expressed next to the British, I also expressed deep concerns for, uh, for Russian people. 
It wasn't only British people, but it was also Russian people I expressed deep concerns for. Next to Ukrainian, next to British, I also expressed deep concerns for Russian people. I was not interested in ending existence of the Russia. I just wanted the Russia to change its policies toward neighbors. All I wanted to do was basically take Russia to into the future so that something would be out of it, so that it would be accepted on a global stage like a place to live, place, place to look forward to, basically place to look forward to. If you guys know who Dmitry Medvedev is, in that smaller than Vladimir Putin, it is smaller than Vladimir Putin, but Dmitry Medvedev, because, because I came up with a theory during MK Ultra, I came up with a theory that I didn't come up with a theory. It was other people that, for what I suggested to you on on the blog. So I think it deserves. It's a really historical stuff. This is really historical stuff. I decided it deserved a closer overview, a closer attention. It definitely became evident that Russia, to everybody involved in MK Ultra, it definitely became evident to everybody, with British royals like the major supporters of it. British royals, again, there is no, this is not for free, this onslaught of Gaza, it, that, it didn't come for free. That's not free. It's not free of charge. The major supporter of espionage in Russia or a major leader in Judaism movement in Russia. These are British royals. And I already explained to you exactly how, why, how it all operates, how they operate, how they get these Jewish people on board, indifferently, completely indifferently from what Germany used to use them before the Hitler arrival. Totally, totally indifferently. This is espionage. It's a network uh, spread throughout the world. This is about the Russia only, and they're the most effective dissidents in Russia, if you ask me. They get on board absolutely all the powers, all the forces necessary to disintegrate country in as efficient way as anything in this world is possible. They go all the way to the top. They own absolutely everything in Russia when it comes to Russia. I guess that Russians that lost 27 million people during the World War II, by the way, I made a mistake here. Uh, I just, uh, when I suggested to get Jews expelled from the Holocaust cause, I really made a mistake. There was 40 people, 40 million people dead in Europe. 40 million people was dead in Europe, and it was over 70 million people dead on a global scale. 27 million were Russians that were killed during the World War II. I am gonna put you these links below, so let me just do this so that I don't forget. And uh, you're just gonna have to bear with me to get this stuff done. I also got other stuff to do, and I really don't get anything in return for this work. Other than trouble, not. It's then more political lobby, it's then more problems that I only get from this stuff, but it's got to be done. They want to have a problem with me, they will have the problem with me.
So out of 6 million people, out of 40 million people killed in Europe, there were 6 million of Jews. Now, I don't see myself in a Jewish cause um, due to severe discrimination I endured from the Jews in the United States of America. And this what they refer to as a Jewish capital of the world. It's called Miami, actually capital of the world of Americas. Therefore, Northern, Central and Southern America, the capital they refer to as is Miami. Incredible discrimination, incredible racism. And it was racism that did not, it was not, it did not pertain only to Miami. But I already have spoke to you about what went on inside of the Israel, where I was delivered for torture, for so-called MK Ultra torture. Whatever the fuck MK Ultra is, I mean, other than you drugged up individual, then you torture him when he's drugged up. I don't know what MK Ultra is. Yeah, it's also ice cream eating in a Hawaii uh, or in Coral Islands next to Putin. Uh, or, I don't know, on Alaska, when it's necessary to post next to somebody. So that is misinterpreted like, oh, well, you know, it was not all that torture. You see, he posts on a thousand locations in Kilimanjaro eating ice cream, Himalaya eating ice cream. It was not all that torture, right? So what, whatever MK Ultra, whatever MK Ultra, whatever you have to say about MK Ultra, that's your problem. It's not going to be part of my problem. Once I became concerned for the Russian people, it became it came to attention to the Russian people, to the KGB, that I'm not all that bad and I'm not all that evil. And guess who was the next in line? that substituted due to my concerns about Vladimir Putin is Jewish background. It was his friend, Dmitry Medvedev. Uh, don't say that uh, Vladimir Putin doesn't have a Jewish background. Because Vladimir Putin was all about the Jewish when it all started. His best friend is Abramovich, Roman Abramovich, he's over there in London. Just like this individual here whom Vladimir Putin assisted to disappear, Boris Berezovsky. Vladimir Putin takes care of his Jewish brothers and sisters in Russia. So, during the past... 15 years or something, Vladimir Putin was no more about Russia, uh, about the Jewish. He didn't want to have nothing to do with the Jewish anymore. Um, he hated Mercedes Daimler Benz with a passion. He hated things that were German with a passion. I don't blame him for it. Now, nah, don't get me, don't, don't misunderstand me. I do not blame him for it. I do not blame him for it. Because of what I stated. I don't blame him for it. But here's the thing. He camouflaged himself entirely into something he's not. Because of my pressure on Putin as per his Jewish background. He became overly suspicious. He became visible. He came out on a place side that the game played in Russia through the Russia. It's going to be done through the Jewish World Congress. Nobody made the Jews wealthier than Russia did through the oil mineral trade through diamonds, business they did, 
the Jewish community throughout the United States of America was purchasing real estate anywhere from Miami all the way to New York and across the U.S. like you wouldn't fucking like your fucking mushrooms after the rain. They were taking absolutely everything over. Absolutely, they were purchasing. It was like an explosion of the money from somewhere. It was like nuclear bomb beginning the year 2000. Like you would fucking throw a nuclear bomb from somewhere. They were taking absolutely everything over. I know so because I lived there. I'm not against his Jewish background. I'm not against existence of the Israel. I'm not against Jewish wealth. But I am against my being exterminated. And I'm against my participating, seeing in something that's being used to exterminate, not in a similar way as other Hitler did, but actually in a ways exceeding other Hitler methods of extermination when it comes to people of Gaza, Palestinian people. When Dmitry Medvedev pop up on the picture to assure me, because it became evident that Vladimir Putin is nothing other than see a spy, he began to assure me that he will be the one also watching over the issues pertaining to the Russian security when it's going to come to um, nuclear threat they would exercise. This issue they discussed in year 2003, 2004. So that's a considerable amount of time. You're talking about well over 20 years ago. 2003, if we go, uh, we are talking about 22 years ago. 22 years ago, they discussed the issue of war, of coming nuclear war with the West, between the Russia and West. 22 years ago. Dmitry Medvedev, his background, however, it became evident also is related to some Jewish background. However, Dmitry Medvedev made sure that none of it would appear absolutely anywhere. I'm not saying that he is practicing Judaism. I'm not saying that Putin is practicing Judaism. Putin jumps into the ice bath, is driving Daimler Benz Mercedes, and so does, I don't know, Dmitry Medvedev, I suppose. But who in this list is what is difficult to know. You don't have to be a Jew to participate in, a, in their circle, in their elite, in their Moscow elite. You don't have to be. You don't have to be. You just have to pay by the cards they lay down. And so those cards open whichever way is convenient for their political agenda. Why was I against this kind of stuff? I saw myself in it. I saw myself in it. I've come to realize that Russia, which is incredibly powerful country, Russia is like Russia is, in terms of oil, in terms of petroleum, natural resources, really a wonder. This is a country with totally unlimited potential when it comes to, uh, this is not Saudi Arabia or Kuwait or something like this, which is like Mecca of petroleum, of everything, minerals, not really minerals, but petroleum. Russia has got everything. 
including what Saudi Arabia, I should say, Kuwait does not. Minerals, you name it. It's a wonder. And it's about two and a half size of the United States. Or I don't know. I don't know how big is it. I'm not going to go into this issue. But something like this. More than that, I think. It's giant. And it's vastly unpopulated. Therefore, its potentials are completely unexploited. What that means when I said that I saw myself in it? Well, the first time I was stabbed in my left arm in Russia with injections was when I was in sixth grade of the grammar school, when they no longer could physically handle me. It was in the sixth grade. It stopped for two years. And it again started actively in eighth grade. Therefore, when I was 14, since 14 years of age, it went on actively stabbing into left arm. Lymph nodes, play with the lymph nodes, gland nodes. Became interesting in the hospitals in, in Moscow. It's the stuff they would continue afterwards in Slovenia against me. You know, I was uh, fairly competitive when I was young, at my young age. Um, physically, development-wise, I was on at least on the level of Mike Tyson. Physically, development-wise, I was at least on the level of Mike Tyson. It's a whole a lot. Maybe something like Evander Holyfield, but a little bit better than Evander Holyfield. I did not go into the world of professional boxing, but if I would go... I would score no less definitely than either of the two. What that mean when they start to stab you with the needles, torture you, destroy you, is unexplainable. You are obviously wasting your potential. You're being pushed away. And it's becoming merciless. But Russia, which had a tremendous potential, and which unfortunately have searched for its progress in areas that are, I'm not going to say inappropriate or uncivilized or whatever it might be, has been a large push into a type of mentality by the people who might have suggested you. Um, Basically, to disadvantage one, to retard one, to make mentality that is just really not part of the human nature. It's the stuff they were doing to me during MK Ultra. As I feel that this, this is the stuff they have done to the Russian people. Finally, would lose the war, entire its national integrity, absolutely in it, everything to corruption. That's what corruption can do. That's what corruption is doing, and that's what corruption will accomplish when it comes to when it comes to Russia. This is why, not because it's an education educated response I have, not because something whatever. That's why I saw myself in it, and I also know that Ukraine, regardless, even if it gains the land back, which it must gain, Crimea back. He must gain Donetsk entirely back, or it will cease to exist. Without Russia, however, Ukraine will not, also will not exist, nor will Poland, nor will Czech Republic, not Slovakia, nobody will exist. Not even Romania and Hungary, everybody will be gone of the picture. Once you get the biggest country in the world like that, you're pretty much in control of the entire world.
That's a fact. I didn't like this picture. It didn't fit me anywhere. Just as a Vladimir Putin and Medvedev and Lavrov and Shoigu, they already figured out everything. It, it, it appeared it was not like this. They failed. A KGB took note and they redistributed this note to Moscow that I'm not really exactly like the way these people wanted me to be completely dehumanized as they have used me. Great for their Jewish greater agenda. They exploited me to redistribute hatred throughout the Russia at large. That's what the torture was for. Successfully have employed me for their purposes. So they would cause as much as division, hatred as possible. And that's how they handle. That's how they handle this world of Russian affairs. Now they're delivering corpses to Russia. Now they're delivering Russian corpses. And they started to blow on people's minds about the price they pay for something that's not theirs, really. But if they pay the price, that then therefore should be it should be this way. It's like a progressive, systematic takedown of the Russia. I had a problem with. And no surprise, it was Medvedev, if I go back, who came to assure me 15 years ago that he would be the one watching also Putin and so on, that the job will be done and so on and so forth. If necessary, that they will follow the steps, the threats and so on, that it will not only be Putin and this and that and so on. So I'm sure that Medvedev would push that button uh, it would be nice if more would be disclosed about Dmitry Medvedev's background. Uh, Peskov, Peskov supposedly is a Russian. I haven't found any link he would have from associated with, uh, with the Jewish or whatever. But like I said, these people get the job done. They get the people that, you know, a Russian side started to suggest me that they are using Jews for espionage anywhere from Dagestan, from Chechnya, from Kazakhstan, and so on and so forth, that they use them. Actually, it's actually contrary. We get the power from it, and so on and so forth. They started to assure me on other issues. Um, I'm not against Jews inside of the government, quite contrary. Uh, I just feel that they should have no greater responsibility as those in Germany, France, Italy, Britain. Is that being said fair? Or Sweden, or Norway, or Spain, or Netherlands, or Belgium. I think it is. Fair and square. Look, When it started in 2003, which was a strong contemplates on Trident misfire. I'm not sure whether the Trident existed in 2003. I'm not sure about it. But in 2006, this news here that you see about a Trident misfire surfaced. For the people involved, I'm not going to say in MK Ultra, but the politicians who ran a common agenda, the Trident missile misfire crashing to ocean 
it started to build beginning the 2005 and 2006. They started to do the stuff in Florida, exactly this kind of stuff that you read here today. The typewriters already created this news, exactly the one you see right there in 2005, in 2006. They did have me in Florida, et cetera, and so on and so forth when they were playing with this stuff. So the news that you read today is the news that was already fabricated in 2005, 2006. Why did Vladimir Putin threaten in front of me to Prince Charles, to Prince Andrew? It's fucking unusual as anything can possibly be with a nuclear strike on Britain but that Britain will be inside of our kitchen uh, are reminded with this that British will be the answer to that issue is very very simple because Putin never ever was associated with anybody more than with the British royals He never was he never ever was associated with anybody more than with the British Royals. So if you want to get the maximum response about ending the war in Ukraine, then you have to have a most powerful friend at the top of the pyramid of corruption. And the top of the pyramid of corruption against Ukraine is based in London. That's one eight hundred London cabal. This is the spike of the freedom, as George Bush would say, that played two sides. One side is real estate transition, real estate brokerage, Ukrainian real estate brokerage, theft of Ukrainian Crimea and Donetsk, and or a total takedown of the Russia, basically turning Russia into a colony with, I'm not going to say assistance of, of United States of America, but purely using, purely using United States of America for a takedown. Germany was paying their bills so far. It did play a major role in war in Ukraine. And so it was, it would be either like this and it would be either like that. But, you know, these are uh, big game fishermen. They don't go fish from the shore. Uh, they like to go on a boats and do that kind of fishing that is for the most of you, for the most of us, unaffordable. In the United States of America, what you see here was known as a big game. It was known as a big game. Big game. So it was either one or the other. Ukraine will not exist without Crimea. It cannot exist without Crimea. It cannot exist without Donetsk. There is no fundamentals that would exist without Black Sea coast. Borders as are of today mean only one thing, and that means definite non-existence for Ukrainian nation does not stand a chance to exist on a map. And a quarter of its land also gets to disappear. The next strike on Ukraine, as Vladimir Putin also projected, would be even much, much stronger, much more effective due to occupied also areas of the Ukraine, which are really yielding Crimea financially is very, very lucrative. From what I have seen, a Russian Jew is, you know, this is supposed to be about my fearing about equal employment opportunity, uh, discrimination wise and so on, but I'm not.
This is where the biggest problem is for American political correctness. This is where the American political correctness smashes into the wall. And the wall is so big that one breaks down its head and starts to fail, jam itself until it fails entirely like the Soviet Union did. The United States of America is in a good track of the Soviet Union, the way things are developing. Believed, I would not trust, I would not try the Jewish problematic. This is when uh, police managed to delete portion of the video clip, as well as hack uh, six minutes and a half of audio recording, as explained, and as they pointed you out on a separate video. So I will go and I will substitute this stuff with whatever is left out of audio recording. As you see, this is hacked stuff here up to here. And I will try to substitute with, uh, again, by going through the internet and doing my best to demonstrate you what exactly I meant by this. They failed. They came to me through the And they released me to the They failed. They came to me through the And they released me to the surprise it was Medvedev, if I go back, who came to assure me 15 years ago that he would be the one watching also Putin and so on, that the job will be done and so on and so forth. If necessary, that they will follow the steps, the threats and so on, that it will not only be Putin and this and that. I'm sure that Medvedev would push that button. Uh, it would be nice if more would be disclosed about Mitri Medvedev's background. Uh, Pesco. Listen up, folks. Uh, I am going to jump in here and we're going to take care of this stuff because Medvedev, I know they cover Medvedev best of their abilities. They cover Vladimir Putin. They cover all this Russian politics, genocide against Ukraine. The one who was in particular enthusiastic about the genocide of people in Ukraine was none other than Tanya Fayon. But what's interesting is that this Slovenian pedophilic culture was the one that gave her thanks so that she could hand them to the Ukraine. This is about maybe the most characteristic, most disgusting, but totally characteristic for Slovenia association I would make about, about this Slovenian pedophilic culture that I have noticed in respect to the war in Ukraine. Tanya Fayon was the most genocidal, bloodthirsty individual involved in MK Ultra. Next to Bort Pahor, Milan Kuchan, the biggest enthusiast and supporter of Vladimir Putin, the war, the Russia, mighty Russia, as the Tanya Fayon saw this thing is really was a Tanya Fayon. Okay, so it's very, very important. Now, the police did their best to protect Medvedev, Putin politics from it. But I'm going to do even a little bit better. I'm going to go a little bit extra.
to remind you again that Russians used, I'm not, not going to say Russians, but definitely Vladimir Putin used Dmitry Medvedev to assure me, to ensure me, actually Dmitry Medvedev approached me during MK Ultra and gestured me that he noticed my being concerned for the Russia. And so because of that concern that they noted that the Russians noticed and so on, obviously the KGB smelled something about it. Otherwise, he would not even approach me. But he decided that he would assure me that I don't have nothing to worry about if it's going to come to something like this, that Russia would be under the threat, nuclear threat and so on, that instead of Putin, he would be the one issuing the threat. Then he also would take initiative to make sure about that Russian security would be in the hands of the Russians and so on. And as I'm going to continue in this uh, recording, you know, this is interesting, the part the Slovenian police became extremely, extremely sensitive about, right? Isn't it interesting? Because everything goes along smooth, but when it comes to Medvedev, when I start to discuss this issue, basically how this stuff was done, and it's basically why I'm actually recording this video, no? Isn't it? One of the essential things to accent was exactly what Slovenian police anticipated would have deleted from the laptop. So I'm not surprised about the laptop that Slovenian police have sold me. Slovenian police sold me this laptop. Slovenian police sold me this laptop. Slovenian police jammed Android. Slovenian police just used the jammer to cause trouble on the telephones was to protect this type of stuff because it, it's basically what it makes the video. So it's very, very important that as I go along this, when I'm repeating this stuff, that you understand everything that I say in this video about what exactly I meant, what exactly I'm suggesting you, how this portion of MK Ultra, so police have no fucking right to the torture of any kind. You understand? You didn't have any kind of right to any kind of MK Ultra. You're fucking insane. You're fucking insane. You get the fucking 10 life sentences, every one of you that did this stuff, that participated in this shit, for this kind of stuff. Under the European, under United Nations laws, under international treaties and everything else in this world. You are a threat to humanity, don't you fucking understand? Slovenia is a threat to humanity. Slovenia destroyed the Charter of United Nations, international human rights treaties, peace treaties and everything. You are a threat to humanity. You're not only a threat to me. Fucking whack job. So let's continue with this stuff. Let's continue with this stuff. The more you're going to do troubles like this to me, the more I'm going to make sure that you understand whatever you try to delete, that I'm going to accent, go over as many times as is necessary for clip to be very well understood exactly by what I meant by what I stated. Let's go again. This was supposed to be is a Russian. Let me repeat everything I stated to you. The Russian side, which noticed because it became a big, big discussion, it became a big, big, big this Jewish question in a Russian politics it started to be a big, big, big discussion, public of a big subject of discussion. As with many people have seen, one being used literally for a total takedown of the Russia, like myself, 
Russians like uh, Dmitry Medvedev, Vladimir Putin and others begun to convince me that uh, Jews do good, really good for the Russian politic, that they are very useful and in Kazakhstan and in Chechnya and in Dagestan and in all these areas throughout the media and so on, that they bring them information that they are actually benefiting, that they hold the whole of Russia together. But this is actually scary, if you ask me. This is actually really, really scary. When you have somebody substituting you, what should be you, uh, holding the country even together, uh, such a big country, those are big words you used, boy, uh, those alarm. Those can be really, really alarming words, and we see how much together they keep Russia, because we see the bloodshed that's taking place in Ukraine. We can see how many Ukrainian people and also Russian people lost lives. We can see the bloodshed that is unheard of. There is no trace about Jew on the picture. All through the dynamic culture was all about the Jew. But we can see the bloodshed like we have never seen in the history of the Slavic nations ever that would take place. We have not seen anything like what's taking place today in Ukraine. So that's a big, big, big question that Vladimir Putin, Medvedev, and these people have had. They had a big fucking problem with this issue because it became evident more and more, foremost because of me, because I started to smell rat in this stuff. I started to smell that the whole thing is going to take Russia to the grave, basically. It's taking down the whole thing. It's going to implore into a war that Russia will use. Now, that is a very, very important issue I have even failed to mention during the video recording of the original video. So I'm going to do even better than what I would do during the original video. Thank you very much, Mr. Medvedev. Without you, I would not make it. Simply, I will tell you something. You know, when Vladimir Putin stayed in 2003, and he was joking inside of our kitchen, and it was not the only time, he did this for about five years, all the way to 2008, that eventually uh, Russia will fight and it will eventually fight even against the entire world in the end. Medvedev was present. That Medvedev is not a Jew, you would not convince me. Because it might be brain that have faded of these idiots here from Slovenia, yes, who participated as the police officers in it. But my brain clearly remembered when it ridiculed in my face that eventually is going to end up with Russia fighting the entire world. And I said, I said to them that this is impossible issue for the Russia to deal with. And they were assuring me it's going to be okay. The Russians were assuring me that it's going to be okay for at least five years. In my head, this shit was not funny. I remember the smile on Vladimir Putin's face. I remember the smile on uh, on this Russians. Medvedev, they were like, it was like funny to them. Uh, my face was as serious as you see me right now. Explaining to me how the Russia in the end is going to fight with the entire world. Uh, seems to me like... You know, like some kind of an ultimate standoff, you know, game or um, I don't play video games, unfortunately, for you that are watching this program with idea to this, you know, to prove me wrong or something, discredit me, or uh, maybe with a mental illness that you guys share, because I'm sure you do play games inside of your homes, but I do not. I don't drink alcohol and I don't drink, I don't play games, you see. To me, it was a matter of nothing funny about it. And I got to tell you that it's this kind of issues that all through it might seem crazy and funny and uh, 
kind of reminded me like some kind of movie that uh, it would be that where it's like an ultimate standoff between some outlaw and uh, I uh, this kind of issues persist in me maybe questions right the entire life until I get answer to them I'm just built like this that when I grab something I keep in my mind until I get the answer to it and this is one of the issues that pertain to Putin, that pertain to Medvedev, that pertain to Peskov, that pertain to these people from Moscow that that would meet me. That uh, simply I never came out, it never came out clear to me. Why would Russia be against the entire world? No, today when I consider the situation, even that Slovenian police have forgotten about it, even that everybody have seems like they have a memory fade. Uh, to me, it is becoming evident about what the fuck this is all about. Something I did not involve in original video, and I really want to thank you for doing that kind of stuff to me. No worries, we're going to include here. We're going to involve this here. <coughs> we're going to improve this video, add a little bit more information. Hopefully that's going to be beneficial. <clears throat> for the people in Russia that watch this program. <clears throat> or Sweden, or Norway, or Spain. Yeah, I don't see the need that uh, Russia would have more Jews in the government than what the Germany does, what Great Britain does, or Italy does, what France does, what Spain does, or Holland, or Sweden, or Norway, or Belgium, or Netherlands, I don't see why why the Russia would have this kind of issues going on. I don't understand any need of it. Do you understand as a Russian why this would be like beneficial for you? Because I mean, right now, I feel that's like uh, water dripping in the throat of the of the Russia. I'm not a Russian enthusiast of the Russia as it was. I do like to see changes when it comes to Russia. I'm not happy with the Russia as, it, as the Russia was. I never saw myself in it. This is a crap. I saw a Russia the way I would want the Russia it was as a place to live, as a livable place where people would rather celebrate life, where people would rather go, you know, after. I'm not going to even say daily earnings or uh, money making, but you know, instead, boost of science universities throughout the Russia, increase of the population, uh, hospitals, factories, but foremost, science. This is basically the way I envisioned Russia. This is how I, I envisioned Russia with a really, really good neighborly uh, relations with the Japan, especially with the Korea, because Korea lost enormous amount of land to Russia. Uh, that's why I suggested also that the Russia should return as a friend, friendly gesture to Korea. You give it to Korea. Korea lost land and on the Chinese side of the border and on the Russian side of the border out of respect out of something it's like you move into the neighborhood where people live you have to demonstrate certain respect to the people I'm not going to say that you have to uh, wreck yourself but when it comes to the human relations I think that for the sake of good relations, it's already a big mistake. I think that Soviet Union did, as far as the core islands in respect to Japan, especially with the nations that you, they are so crucial of your existence, trade, existence, trade. You may want to demonstrate a little bit sacrifice, you know, to, you know, so they can see you as a neighbor, so they can see you as a. 
two and a half times bigger than the United States of America, I'm sure you're not going to go bankrupt. If you, as a sign of gesture, as a sign of good neighbor, do something so they see you also as an Asian, rather than colonialist in the Asian part of the world. You know, that's, that's all I'm saying. This is basically how I envisioned Russia. I envisioned Russia through the good relations with the Kazakhstan, with the, all the people in the area, with, a, with something they, they, would, they, they would be proud of, something they would see themselves in rather than, uh, you know, fear about what the fuck is going to happen next. It doesn't come anything crazier than when you, when you say, like Vladimir Putin stated, that Ukrainian DNA is the same as the one of the Russian. You know, and then 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 it comes in the house to chop people basically. The, the human DNA is the same like the one of the Russian then goes inside and start killing people. What the fuck can I tell you? What is there to say? I mean, is there like anyone in area that would love to have the word? Would you like to say something as a Chinese or as a Korean or as a, as a Japanese? Do you like to have something? I mean, if this isn't insane enough, then I don't know what it is. To me, this theory, what I observed, what I watched, what I became considered about, does make a whole lot of sense. When you tell me that in the end, Russia is going to face the whole world, it's going to be against the whole world. It was funny in 2003. It's not funny in 2024. And I don't care who the fuck you are. If you're a Russian, you probably agree with me. Or Netherlands. Or Belgium. I think it is. Fair and square. Look. When it started in 2003, which was a strong contemplate, they mean only one thing, and that means definite non-existence for the Ukrainian nation. Does not stand a chance to exist on a map. And the border police. I don't even understand what I'm saying here. When it started in 2003, which was a strong contemplate, they mean only one thing, and that means definite non-existence for the Ukrainian nation. Yeah. Does not stand a chance to exist on a map. And the border police also gets this. The next strike on Ukraine, as Vladimir Putin also referred to, would be even much, much stronger much more effective. Uh, because, you know, I suggested that, uh, not because I suggested, Jesus Christ. As far as the European Union membership, NATO membership, you know, that's going to be for Ukraine and modernized Ukrainian weaponry, you know, military and so on. You know, you're going to cooperate with us in other parts of the world. That's the kind of stuff I chew and I spit out. That's how they wanted and they demanded the Ukrainian side to see themselves in it. It's going to be modernized Ukraine in NATO and also European Union for the cost of the entire Black Sea coast, Crimea, eh, the fuck can I tell you, Donetsk? It's bullshit. Ukraine will, of course, cease to fucking exist, right? I mean, you don't have to be no fucking genius to do that. And Joe Biden have a lot of problems with it. He somehow could not understand this shit. He did, he did, he understood very good. Why don't you fucking give me another piece of Ireland, man? Why do you want your island back? If you feel that this is not a problem, that this is not a big deal, you're ready to kill for a little piece, for a little strip of land. 
without actually even having the ability to make any difference between the British military yourself. But when it comes to Ukraine, it's so cool to give three islands away more important on a much more expensive, on much more exclusive location than Ireland as a gift to Russia. This is not a fucking problem for you. You know, this kind of double standards, this kind of double thinking, the way you see these things, is, to me, makes no fucking sense, really. Let's see what that means, basically. Do you know what it means to forfeit against the Russia for Ukraine? This is a Ukraine here. With a plain and simple in... Uh, in the terms of what they even dare to suggest i don't know what i would refer to that as they suggested that this here this will be all basically from there that this will be the the dra 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 that this will be russia everything all this you know this is not fucking bad because when it comes to ukraine this is the most expensive part and what you leave the rest of it is just shit. It's nothing. What you leave when it comes to the rest of it, you give this little coast here. And even to this part of the coast here, this part of, this part of the coast here, uh, you need the bridge to go through because it's a Moldova right there. So you, you fucking leave the Ukraine, I don't know, really with nothing. With the most exclusive, the most expensive coast in the world, you go from the most exclusive, from the most expensive part of the world, you go to fucking nothing. To me, this is not a logical thing to do for the Ukraine, because I know that not only will make Russia even stronger, but I know the war is going to repeat itself, because it doesn't have a chance not to repeat itself. With what you see right there, economically empowered Russia, this part here will, this part here that, that Putin would like to have stolen, this is stronger than the rest of the Ukraine. Do you know this? This is economic power here. This is economic engine of the, of the Ukraine. So the Putin is taking what is the most precious, the jewel of Ukraine is taken away. This is like you want to suffocate somebody and the first thing you do is you affect his uh, ability to breathe. And when he's already suffocating himself, then you go and you finish the job, basically. This is what this is. This is a systematic takedown of the Ukraine. This is a matter of existence for Ukraine. This is a matter of existence of for entire country. And this is a matter of security for entire, definitely, existence of entire Eastern Europe, for Poland, Slovakia, and Czech Republic, Hungary, crazy fucking Hungary, and Romania, and Greece and Bulgaria, and Slovenia, and Croatia, and everybody, everything in Eastern Europe. It's a matter of existence. Secondary, it is existence. It's a matter of security for the entire European continent. And third, this is about the global security. So when you are talking about, the way you talk about even you dare to talk about NATO and European Union, I don't know how you dare to talk about these issues to the Ukrainian side. If I were Ukrainian, I would ask you, how the fuck you dare to talk about us like this when you represent actually NATO and European Union in a, in a way that is endangering the security and stability of the entire world when you present your conditions as such when you when you haggle about whether you should liberate only Donetsk and uh, that stuff or you should also liberate they continue so Biden continue to struggle he continue to struggle he wasn't sure if he would Crimea, if he, he would Donetsk, and so on and so forth. So I hope it's understandable that this shit is actually non-negotiable if you want to put Ukraine on the map. So I think it does make sense 
that we clarify this kind of issues now. Let's continue with this. From what I have seen, a Russian Jew is, you know, this is supposed to know about my fearing about equal employment discrimination wise and so on, but I'm not. Obviously, I am using uh, equal, equal employment opportunity. Obviously, I am using an American discrimination law. Like it. I like it when I think gloves in Western hands. You know, using an individual speaking of gloves. I love it because this fascist United States that ruins 30 million lives of children that they destroy. Even on the other side of the ocean, that I just love to come to the shit the fuck out of it. I love it, man. This is where the American political correctness is. I'm giving three fucks about your anti Semitic laws. And the world is so big that one breaks down its head and starts to fail. Your anti-Semitic laws are being used to build, to rebuild, to bring back on the feet of Nazism and fascism. I'm going to tell you plain and simple, clear what they are being used. They are being abused. Because you are abusing relations, relation with the Israel, you are abusing the relation with, through the Israel, a relation with other people, with other nations, and you're engaging in a politics that is the most hateful politic in this world. It's politics that is directed into total destabilization of the world. You have your laws, the, your laws that you have, your laws. Uh, the kind of a laws that pertain to the people inside of the concentration camp. I think United States of America is a fucking concentration camp, indifferent from what the Soviet Union was. It is actually becoming more and more oppressive. It is already becoming so oppressive that people are actually moving out of the United States, out of Canada, and out of the United States of America. It's becoming, it's becoming, it's becoming really. Uh, Everything that was said about the Soviet Union and the United States of America is in a good track and even exceeding it. I believe I will not trust, I will not try the Jewish problematic. That's interesting. I find this interesting. Prince William calls defense. Gaza fighting as soon as possible. This was not a fighting. Bizarre. This was not a fighting. This was an onslaught. This was not a fighting. And the British royals were in the center of it. This is what went missing on this portion of the video that was uh, the clip, the video clip that somehow went missing. Now they're talking about the 29,000 Palestinians. I think that by the time that this ends and all the numbers get together, it's going to be at least 60,000. You're going to see the numbers that you see right there that Mr. Google displays. You're going to see they're very unrealistic. When you're going to go and you're going to do the number, the count, it, it will be at least 50% more. And this is, I know, because also was the issue they discussed during MK Ultra, how they're going to rationalize the ethnic cleansing, extermination. This is called extermination. That's why I said your anti-Semitic laws, considering that Palestinians are Semites, more pure Semites 
than Jews who are mixed with Europeans. This is extermination. This is genocide. This is, this is ethnic cleansing. This is a real fucking anti-Semitism. This is this is what you are doing. This kind of stuff. What you are doing. That's what you call. That's what you call an anti-Semitism and a perfection of extermination. Everything Adolf Hitler only dreamed about. What about the household? How is it a household? There is not a one fucking house in the Gaza that is still intact. That is in one piece. The hospitals have been destroyed. This is 70% of the Gaza homes are being destroyed. So 70% 70, 70 of the people being fucking homeless. This is also known. This war is also known as a war on a journalist. It's also the war, it's also known 85%, they say it's destroyed. It's 85% of the people that is homeless, basically, of 2.4 million people. This is a war on the journalists. I don't know how many journalists were killed. And they were killed by the Israelis. We have not seen the war like this. We have not seen stuff like this. And it does make me vomit. It makes me vomit when I see people yesterday who discussed these issues. Around the, around the table on how it shall be done and went ahead eventually to replace London police people in charge for peace and order who were preparing themselves for a large protest with their own installations and went ahead through their lobby literally a royal lobby to install even their anti-movement, anti-Palestinian movement throughout the London. With idea how they're going to incarcerate as many people as possible and get as many British people that oppose this kind of extermination genocide as homeless. It makes me vomit to see somebody after some atrocity like this was done in his name, in his father's name, in his uncle's name, in his brother's name, to go and express dissatisfaction with extermination of people in Gaza. So if I am suggesting you here in this case, um, stuff I insist on. It's not that I'm suggesting that I insist on. I mean, you would have to be blind not to see it, do you? If you don't see what's going on, you have to be blind. This operation, at the beginning of the Putin is war on Ukraine. And I told you about that Israel also had plans to invade Gaza. Already is profiting Israel at large. This operation, this business of, of Vladimir Putin went under the complete support of the Israel. Yeah, I mean, what's going to happen is Gaza will run over, will disappear. So if you want to say that this is not Jewish, but it's Jewish and this and that, this is Jewish. 
this is Jewish. Ukraine is paying the bill to the Jews right now. Ukraine is paying the bill to Israel. While it was translated to me during MK Ultra that it's exactly the opposite, that will be Israel that will start the war. So that Ukraine would liberate itself. On a greater chess map, when you look at one, when it comes to Syria, it was translated to me that it will be Israel that will be helping war against Russia. But the Syria was on the map when it comes to MK Ultra already since 1995. I was delivered for torture to Syria already in beginning like 1990 by the Russians, one Russian eventually who supposedly got killed, um, I'm not going to go look for, by the Vladimir Putin, there was a Russian that uh, supported uh, chemical weaponry production of what they refer to as a mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction in Syria. And it's what also I was suggested, it's what placed, uh, executed by Vladimir Putin from behind. It's what I was suggested also, and it's, it's a great possibility, placed Vladimir Putin on the map if true, then it definitely got the support from Israel through this case, the case I'm talking about. This was a Russian military person uh, who would travel with me to Syria. And he had in 1990, he had a plan for a mass production of chemical agents, uh, deadly chemical agents that Syria would use in the future for its defense against Israel, if necessary. Uh, look, why is it nobody talking about why there was there was mentioned something about the Vladimir Putin is teacher, how she moved to the Israel. She was involved in MK Ultra. But my question is, since they refer to him as a phantom of Israel, why nobody's talking about the Putin is visits to Israel? Putin was all about the Israel in 94, 95, 96, 97. The way he treated me inside of my home here in the city of the Novomest in Slovenia was like I was completely stateless. Yeah, Slovenian police gave Vladimir Putin, Russian government, such a green light for such stuff. They did suggest in my face that the Russian president is the president of Slovenia. In fact, they're not even happy with the Slovenian presidents because they take no action. Slovenian police was all about the butchery. They were bloodthirsty. They couldn't wait to get me killed. And so the Russian president was more interesting to them because it was more for action. Do you know how many times I was in Israel with the Putin? Why nobody's writing about these issues? How about American embassy in Israel, where the Russians, Americans gathered? That was one of the main dots. Do you know that Israel was like the biggest Illuminati destination after the World War II? This is where everybody would gather from around the world, actually talking about the Russia and United States. This is like an epicenter of cooperation between the Russia between the Soviet Union and between the United States of America. Do you know anything about this stuff? This stuff is factual, because I was there. I was tortured in that embassy. I was tortured heavily in Israel. And people would like memory to be changed, replaced, replicated, substituted with something else, with lies. Like, for instance, wife of Putin,
I don't know where she bought a villa. Uh, Ludmila Putinova buy villa in South France and so on and that kind of stuff. This is not uh, so much just like this. This is the kind I was all every everything that you see in the media about these people, where, who was, where, how. I was here. I was here before they purchased this villa. This is business related, though. You understand? This is a business. It's about the public image Vladimir Putin portrays. Vladimir Putin portrays the image of a Russian. When he, in fact, is not even, an, I'm not going to say that he's not a little bit Russian. But he is creating the image that has nothing to do with his uh, reality. This image has very, very little to do with reality, but it's got a lot to do with this kind of reality. Why is nobody talking about the issues such as that I stated? Sergei Shoigu was crazy about the Israel. So, so the, the Israel is well, well, well positioned, positioned in this game, game isn't, isn't it? Prince, Prince Charles, Prince William, Prince Harry, Prince Andrew. Prince Andrew. They, they got, got all the cards on the table where they, they need to be. They're playing the game, game and the game, game is being played for their, on their behalf, just the way it was outlined long time ago it would be. And if it goes like a long time the way it would be, the Israel would stretch all the way to the Lake Assad. If it would be like, because you know, there is always the war after. And when it comes to the mother war, the same as this is in the case of the Ukraine, then this would be the new border of the Israel for which Netanyahu dreamed about would spread all the way to Iraq using I don't, I don't want to go and distance myself too much. much. I, don't I don't want to go distance myself too much with this stuff. You know, I don't, I don't want to go distance myself too much with these issues. issues. But it does concern you, whether you like it or not. It concerns what I suggested earlier is this issue here. And I made a mistake. I said it was 27 million killed in Europe. It was not. I will repeat you. It was 40 million. Out of 40 million, it was 6 million of Jews. Because it's a prelude into bigger and bigger and bigger wars. It's a prelude into colonization of humanity, of entire humanity and entire time. It does concern you. It concerns you just as it concerned me when Prince William demanded from me to accept the responsibility for this. Just as the Prince William demanded it from me to accept, accept responsibility for this. That's, That's basically, basically for the World War III. He said, you, I will demand that you accept the responsibility for it, that it is a part of you that is a responsibility for it. So I'm guilty to be born in Slovenia. I'm guilty for being Slavic, just like Ukrainian people are guilty to be born in Ukraine. They are guilty to exist, Prince William. Prince William said that if the Britain will be bombed, if the Britannia will be bombed, if anything goes wrong, if something happens and so on. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I demand the responsibility for it. For it. You, you will be held responsible because you insist on liberating Ukraine. Ukraine. Not, Not on liberating Ukraine, Ukraine but on keeping the Ukraine on the map. Ukraine, Ukraine was blacklisted, listed as good as dead on an economic map by none other than British. It was not Chinese. It was British that stalled the economy that will go for about $100 per month salary-wise. Till just recently, in Bukovina, they keep on knees so much due to the interests of the Hungarians that wanted their part of Ukraine, right? The British love Hungary. They love Hungary. They travel to the Hungary all the time. They had their plan together with the Hungarian government for the Ukrainian part of the Bukovina. So you know, Prince William, I'm going to say to you something. Your double dealings, the way you do the business, the way you, the way you enforce your views on the world, the way you the way you want the world to look like together with your friends from Moscow when it comes to Ukraine this is totally indifferent from this year why you call now you call for the for to, to end the onslaught uh, Gaza as soon as possible it is not human it's not human come on baby you are about the humanity, you are the most human person, come on, you go to the charity. You like the charity, you know? And you have the friends, you have all the friends, multiracial friends from around the world. The London is so colorful, you are so free, you have such a freedom. You are so free-oriented, everything is about the freedom, you know? Come on, baby, baby. And you even worry about the Britain? Really? You know what, pal? If you worried about Britain, you wouldn't go and disarm Ukraine in 1990. Remember what you were doing with me in 1990. Barbicic-Londonsky. You forgot about what you did to me in 1990 together with your... Actually, you. You were fucking in diapers in 1990. But your uncles and your, your daddy. You wanted to give nuclear weapons so you stripped Ukraine from the weaponry. Because, because you guaranteed Ukraine, the United, United States, States of America, America did, that if the, the Russia will attack, and, and so on, the Ukrainian, Ukrainian integrity will be defended with the nuclear arsenal of the United States of America, of the West, for whatever cost. So, so you, you like, like to switch, switch the roles. You like, like to switch the roles. You are a victim. Today you are a victim. You're going to play the victim, you're now the victim, because Russia will bombard London, they will bombard Britain. I cannot say that it will not. I, I definitely will not assure you that Russia will not bomb Britain, that they don't have the weaponry, or they, they would not bomb Britain. But I'm not going to accept the responsibility for the termination of existence of Ukrainian people. Would you like to accept one, Prince William? I mean, because you don't know anything. You're nowhere to be seen in the media. Nobody talks about your involvement into the world of political affairs. Well, you have one. You play with expensive items such as diamonds, oil, petroleum, iron, weaponry. Then you have to, you deserve your spot under the sun to be also seen as such. Not that you're going to be hiding behind some kind of a humanitarian, now you're going to be like this. Fuckity, fuckity, mister. It does not work like this. I want your responsibility when it comes to Ukraine. Are you going to be responsible for the end of existence of Ukrainian people? Oh, but Ukrainian people will get the membership in the NATO. And will get the membership inside of the European Union. Well, you know what? Why don't you return eastern part of the Germany to the Soviet Union, to the Russia? Since the Germans got the right to participate in NATO in inside the European Union. Why don't you do this? 
why don't you why don't you do this this kind of trades? Why don't you why don't you do this this type of business? Because you like diamonds, you like business, you like money, and you are eager to get the humanity on its knees. You want either one or the other, and based on what you have on your threads during MKL, you insisted, if I would talk about this stuff, and if I would go and I would do this kind of stuff, and then it would be nothing. We will not go for a total uh, war with the Russia. If we will not go for the total war in Russia, then it will be nothing. Then Ukraine will not be liberated. Yeah, liberated means that you not only means, but you recognize without understanding that I am know, that I know this, that the occupation of Crimea and of Donetsk was done with your full permission, that you completely, your uh, agentur, Vladimir Putin, performed this occupation totally in accordance, totally in agreement with you. I was on Crimea during occupation, prior to occupation, I was delivered over there from psychiatric hospital. They made sure that I would participate. Ukrainian people have video recordings about. I was in Crimea, I was in Donetsk, I was in these areas. You, you know, you have a really, really memory loss. You are really, really, you're switching the roles. You want to jump from one issue to the other without actually taking any kind of responsibility for what is taking in the world. You just want the ice cream. Let me see the, let me just see this here. Let me just see Gaza intervention. Let me just see this stuff here today. Let me just see this here because, let me just see this stuff here. I have not seen, I have not seen absolutely anything when it comes to the British Royals. I've not, look at this. He calls for immediate end of fighting in Gaza, landmark, uh, and so on and so forth. Wow. Um, hmm. uh, was Prince William's statement on Gaza too political? Hey, why don't you tell, why don't you give us your, yeah, please tell us. You know, this picture here about this royals here, this was, it, it still is, so it's all about the fun. It was like really, really lively. It was like really, um, that I got impression about. Um, it, it had to be this way, right? If you want to present the issues like this, it just had to be that way. It can't be actually any other way. I mean, I completely understand that the nature of the, of the crime itself, it requires you to look as lively, as happy, as dynamic, and as just like family, normal, uh, celebrating it all the way, jingle way, as much as possible. So you don't, just like Vladimir Putin, so you don't come under the suspicion of what actually is taking place, do you? I mean, it's just got to be done this way. I get it. Uh, I was just checking this side to see basically how much it changed. Because usually during the moments like this, you know, everything turns more serious. All of a sudden, the picture that we have witnessed here under the Royals, the, at the Alta like Express UK, you were all supposed to uh, portray the serious faces, uh, different facial expressions, uh, more like something like this. And it looks like it really did. No, I did not browse this today. I knew that when I'm going to go here, I'm going to start to see something different. That the, the whole picture is gonna is gonna change its landscape because that's basically how they operate, and I want some accountability for this kind of stuff. You got it all. You are at the top of the pyramid. You will have to bear entirely the responsibility for this stuff just like Adolf Hitler did during the World War II. 
you're not recognized and admitted. You have your ministers, you have your prime ministers, you have your, your people around you. But I want accountability for this stuff. I lost 52 years of life to you and to your chain of debt. So for me to express myself properly. This issue here, this issue came on a picture. The speaker, Mike Johnson, you should see the picture right there. There's going to be a picture like this and so on. And they were assuring me, well, how they were assuring me? They were saying to me, well, you know, um, I just need to really properly recall the whole thing. I was asking them, what the fuck is this? And so on and so forth. What this about the Ukraine aid and this? Why why is it uh, look like this when they presented to me during MK Ultra? I told you that Johnson was involved in this stuff. Heavily. One of the most involved people. Just happened. So became now known as Speaker Michael Johnson who was involved in it. I don't know. I remember once since he got his degree together. And I was asking them, I said, why, why is he looking so worried and this and that in front of a computer when they did the brainwash? And uh, they keep reminding me, it's a, it's a war. It's a, it's a, basically, it's a nuclear war that's coming. It's a nuclear war that's coming. And I was like, I was, maybe I, I even gave the wrong impression uh, but I did not give anybody any kind of wrong impression. This stuff was used to see the reactions also in people. Under MK Ultra, they evaluate people, they subject to MK Ultra, so they get to see reactions in the people. I did not just reacted basically uh, in fear that Ukraine would eventually lose its support from the West. for liberation of Ukraine. The stuff that you see right there came up, came on a picture to me already sometimes in, I estimate like 2000 and, I would say probably 2017. This stuff was done inside of our house here in the city, the novel made stuff. Brainwashing on the computer on how to see things is. And they were assuring me that support will be for Ukraine. Um, but that this is about the World War III. So it has to look like this, the news, the media. While I uh, totally understand the concerns behind this, uh, I would not haggle in between what I stated. I sure would hope that Russians withdraw from Ukraine, they respect Ukrainian integ integrity, national integrity, and it's therefore I'm going to say its existence, and withdraw from Ukraine entirely. I sure would accept, uh, expect this. However, by being realistic about it, we all know that the Russians are not going to do any of that stuff. We all know that there will be a war. And the most important of all is that, I'm not going to say that we assure Ukrainian people about their existence. And the most important about it is that Ukraine gets liberated, that Russian troops are thrown out 
so that Ukrainian nation can continue to exist. Now, I stalled at a very, very important issue a little earlier. Very, very important issue about a Russian Jew or Jew from Russia that I did not end. And I mentioned to you equal employment opportunity in those kind of issues. It's very, very important that we seal the deal also in respect to that one. You know what I'm actually thinking about? Draža Mihailovic. Draža Mihailovic was. Uh, you know who Draža Mihailović was? Draža Mihailović was... This was the head of the Chetniks. This was like a collaborator or, of Adolf Hitler from Serbia. This guy here, you can see. Chetnik. Chetnici Chetnik. This is a Velika Serbia. Chetnik. Republika Srpska, Chetnik. Cetnik Karadžić, Cetnik Aleksandar Vučić, Cetnik Milošević, simply Cetnik, you know, Cetnik, Cetnik like a Cetnik, Cetnik. Republika Srpska Cetnik. In this case, it's not about the Republika Srpska, it's not about the Serbia. In this case, we're going to be discussing about the Larry Page. And we're going to be about Sergei, they call him Sergei Brin. So his name is actually... It's not really Brin. This is what he gave himself. As if I ask him, you're gonna say, he's gonna say to you, "Oh, I am a, I am a Jew from Russia." He's gonna say to you. Yeah. If you ask Mikhailovich, his name is Mikhailovich actually. He said, "Oh, I am a Jew. I am a Jew from Russia." If you meet him in America, he's going to say, "I'm a Jew from Russia." He's going to say, "I'm a Jew from Russia." That was he's going to say, "I'm a Jew from Russia." No. He's not going to say to you, "I'm a Russian Jew." He's going to say, "I'm a Jew from Russia." It's a fuckety fuckety game. You know what a fuckety fuckety game is? Fuckety fuckety. Fuckety fuckety. Hop hop. A little bit here, a little bit there. Hop hop. Fuckety fuckety. Talk about the Hitler while being Adolf Hitler yourself. You fucking Hitler. You Jews are fucking Hitlers. You are Hitlers. I don't give a fuck about your equal employment opportunity by United States of America, equal rights for everybody and this and that. You are fucking Hitlers. In my case, you are fucking Hitlers. You Jews are the biggest racist in this world. It's a little bit that's missing in my file. Even that you were proclaimed as the main supporter of Adolf Hitler. You are the one who created Adolf Hitler. Many of you not only served in the SS, in the German SS, but you also were financially one of his biggest supporters if it was not for your six million people that Hitler exterminated. I would actually charge you with creation of the Hitler. It's more than you, entire European continent got burnt because of other Hitler. It was 40 million people killed on European continent. You know, just a little bit more is just a little bit more, and you're going to be the one charged by creating Adolf Hitler. Based on my experience, what you have done to me, your fuckety fuckety game, just a little bit more, and I'm going to start proving that you created one. You're not far from it. 
he came up with a theory to indoctrinate. He became an indoctrinator. He became a teacher. This guy became a universal teacher. He became indoctrinator of the new world order. So whether you are from Africa or you are from China or you are from Japan or you are from Argentina or Brazil or Mexico, you get to be indoctrinated. He will teach you, basically. You write in your, in your Google, you know? It's a Google. He had a, they have a big problem, Larry Page and Sergei Mikhailovich, Mikhailovich Brin. They have, what is it? Is it like, are you talking about to you, Sergei Brin Mikhailovich? Are you... Are you Mikhailovich Sergei from Russia or are you Brin Sergei from Russia? What are you? They started to indoctrinate the people. He was one of the biggest clowns in the pocket of Vladimir Putin, this guy. But if you pay attention, you're going to see that both Larry Page and Sergei Mikhailovich Brin both are Jews, if you pay attention to it. And the only platform that is left free to do the blogger, to blog, that's actually a blogger that belongs to the Google, with the YouTube as the biggest one. So that you, when you lay those Jewish cards, they add up together so nicely. If you enter here Crimea, you get the Wikipedia. They've also participated in it. And then below this stuff, you start to get the lesson from the Putin. You get the indoctrination, you get the free school, and never mind, you finish your fucking university if you went and you have the university from the history, whatever the fuck you have. It's not worth the fucking shit. Because the Mikhailovich is universal. He's your indoctrinator, whatever the fuck you are. Look. Is Crimea in Ukraine or in Russia? The Republic of Crimea is a Republic of Russia. Oh, now it's already Republic of Russia, you see? <laughs> uh, and you scroll down. And it says right there, why did Russia give Crimea to Ukraine? So you have a Jew from Russia, or a Russian Jew, whatever you want to call this, indoctrinating us all about Crimea. It would be nice if there wouldn't be lies that are written. They're horrific lies. They're terrible lies. So I'm going to say to Zelensky, don't say that Israel is our friend when so clearly is the biggest fault in this game. I've seen the video of Jews walking in the streets of whatever is left of the Palestine asking Palestinian people about, in this case, Gaza, before the assault on Gaza, what their opinion was about the other Hitler. Most of the Palestinian people didn't like one, but here and there some appeared that due to what Israel is doing to them for the last five decades, even expressed support for one. Unfortunately, there was also people like this that and it's basically what they targeted, and it's the issues that also were involved in MK Ultra. They were Jews were literally using me for this type of propaganda. They delivered me to the Gaza for this type of stuff, looking for the people that would give them the statements they want to obtain prior to invasion of Gaza. So I have something little to say 
about it all. And I will, I am determined, will have a lot to say about it all. Israel is not going to get away with its war crimes, and nor will British lawyers. This is where it ends. This is where American fascism, colonialism hits the wall. This is where it all ends. Was Crimea ever part of Russia? Crimea was part of the Crimean Khanate from 1441 until it was annexed by the Russian Empire in 1783. After the end of empire of the first stage of the Russian Civil War, there was a tra la 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 Do you know something? Before you're going to go and indoctrinate this issue here, There is being Crimean Tatars that are being thrown in Ukrainian city known as Rostov on Don. Rostov on Don always was Ukrainian city. This was a major capital of the Ukraine. Its name is Rostov on Don. This was a major, major, major capital. It's what actually held Ukraine together in one piece. The Ukraine extended all the way to what is known as the Caspian Sea. Here, this city here is called Kamishak, was Astrakhan. This is how far the Ukraine was. The Russians never had any kind of anything along the Black Sea, and the Russians never had anything when it comes to the Caspian Sea. Till they got clearance to the Caspian Sea, and to the Black Sea literally through occupation of Ukraine. The Ukraine tried to, Ukrainian people tried to live with the Russians in symbiosis as one, and they did not, because they did not anticipate it's going to turn into something much, much worse than Holocaust. I find it appalling that Jews would not recognize Holodomor. That's a 100-year war on people of Ukraine as a form of genocide. I find it appalling. But at the same time, depend, demanding from everybody and denigrating Ukrainian people as Nazis and so on and so forth. I find that really, really, really appalling. But, you know, that's the way the Jews play their game. That's a jewelry. That's basically the way it goes. If I'm wrong about, if I'm mistaken about something, I am gladly going to accept all the responsibility for it. But at this time, at this point in time, you are the one who's going to sit in a courtroom and is going to answer the questions to me. The storm is coming on you this time. It was different when I was in Miami, but it's now completely different. We are not in Miami. Jews never heard of, they never heard of anything about they never heard about anything about this here. During this mass edition, the Soviet authorities confiscated about 80,000 houses, we're talking about the Crimea. 500,000 cattle, 360 acres of land, and 40,000 tons of agricultural provision. It deported 200,000 Crimean Tatars, basically the entire population. Ukrainian Tatars were thrown out of Crimea due to a Russian ethnic cleansing. It did not also stop short of Armenians, 10,000, 12,000 Bulgarians, 15,000 
Greeks. Sergei Mikhailovich will not tell you anything about under his indoctrination about his teaching. Jew from Russia, a Russian Jew will not tell you anything about this kind of issues about, and even less will mention to you anything about this. He will not talk to you anything about this here issue. He will not tell you anything about what happened. He will tell you that uh, how long was Ukraine, how long uh, Crimea was part of Russia. That's what he wants to argue about. This is what you get when you give the Russian access to the Black Sea and to the Caspian Sea. This is what you get in return. The same shit as Mikhailovich have done here on Balkans. Actually, what Mikhailovich still want to do on Balkans. And with what Prince William threatened me with, how he will support the Serbs in war against Slovenia and Croatia and Bosnia. So I find uh, none of this stuff amusing. This is a deadly serious stuff. We are in the midst of the World War III. It will have to be resolved from my stand of view at satisfaction of Ukrainian people with determination of Ukrainian people. It wasn't only Russians that lost lives. The Ukrainian lives are also lives. They are also human beings. There are people too, Mr. Prince Harry and Mr. Prince William. They are also people. They are also human beings. I sure do not know, I sure do not know how this conflict will resolve itself when it comes to Ukraine. I do not know which way the Western superpowers will choose this conflict to develop itself. But since you wanted the portion of responsibility a good portion, a good part of it, because I was blamed for it. Because you demand Ukraine, because you want to defend Ukraine and so on. Hmm. And because I sure would not want British to suffer consequences of some kind of Russian nuclear device detonated in Britain I definitely would advise British and everyone else to close till the conflict ends in Ukraine till the Ukraine is not going to say liberated Till it gained its national integrity back. And that's why I said that this is the longer it's going to take, the more painful it's going to get, the bigger the losses, the more costly the whole thing. Unless you have uh, in your mind a picture of what I stated to you earlier, I do suggest you to start. Transfer of your NATO troops where their place is at this time to ensure that they get out of Ukraine before the Russian election. I would suggest British for their well-being, and not only British but the NATO allies, to close entirely and Baltic and Bosphor, and also area in Atlantic Ocean that will completely cut Russia from entering Atlantic from any direction, through the Iceland all the way to north to prevent any kind of major uh, potential disaster for people of Britain. We don't want any of that. I don't want British to 
to suffer a nuclear attack from Russia. So that somebody could prove, in fact, that there was a risk, there was a certain issue with it, uh, and it's, it costed so much, and so now it would be entitled to something, and so on and so forth. I don't want any of that stuff. You knew about the coming war. You had uh, not only chances to arm in advance Ukraine prior to the war, you played a decider in the nuclear disarmament of Ukraine in 1990, when I was the only person still left on the table that had war absolutely with everybody because I refused Ukraine to be disarmed. This, is, this shit is bizarre. This shit is bizarre. Greater than Great Britain also was the one that created Israel. As you know, it was British that gave Israel the existence because it was part of the Palestine. It was occupied by the British. It was a colony. It was formally known as a colony of Britain. They were the ones that created Israeli state. Um, you cannot go and reshape the world with lies, with altering the courses of the history, facts, uh, to your advantage at the expense of other people, nations, in the way you do. It does not work. So, be good, stay nice, uh, and send those weapons to Ukraine together with the troops so that this war ends, this play, not war, but this game ends before the Russian elections. Just a little update here so that, that we're going to stay we're going to stay on the same page, we're going to stay on a, on a page of facts as to what these facts truly are, the way the world is, and not on, you know. MK Ultra must not become a tool of reshaping the world. My legacy is to fight MK Ultra on every step of the way, whatever it takes, so that it will not come to issues such as I stated you here we will not want to be going into conspiracy theories and all kinds of theories uh, what source, who source uh, the FBI individual was on the picture involved in Antioch for at least, uh, I'm going to say, 30 years. Joe Biden knew one very well. Uh, and, uh, you know, you're, 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 I understand that you have to portray your reality the way you, so that you justify whatever you want to justify. But just make sure that you justify the picture so that it would not cost people even more lives. So they would not nation they would not cost they would not come women with a greater loss for the nations as it did. And so that we all have roofs above our heads tomorrow. That's all there is. You know about what's going to happen, how it's going to happen. Uh, so, I wasn't shared any details about the operations, how it would be, uh, the whole thing would be. They did play me some stupid stuff 
on how they would trade the nuclear blows with one another. I don't think this would be a scenario that the United States would agree upon. Uh, but, you know, I'm just giving my five minutes about Ukraine, what to expect about Ukraine, where the whole picture is going to go next. As far as Sergei Mikhailovich Brin, who was involved in a torture, as well as his Larry Brin, uh, I am going to use the state prosecutors for that issue. Because this isn't about discrimination or something like this. This was literally genocide extermination procedure and forced down my throat. I would be talking about any any kind of discrimination issues here, or even insults. When you're actively involved in a torture, nobody caused more harm than Google did, than YouTube did, Blogger did, what was eventually even used by the psychiatric hospital in Ljubljana, Polje. I see the guy here is still here in Slovenia. He was, he was involved in it. Um, I'm not going to say that this is, uh, this is actually one of the founders of Google that is here still in Slovenia. This guy is supposed to be in Slovenia already. What do they have to say? Let me see. If it's going to be true, I'm going to tell you it's true. He it says it's 42, Danes živi v Ljubljani. I just need to make sure that what the article is going to say about this him about his wife is it from Czech Republic. He was involved a very, very, very long time in this stuff. Uh, I need to see this stuff here and see this here. Danes živi v Ljubljani, kamor se zdržino presele pred tremi leti, star 42 let in tako naprej. This is the guy that in Slovenian says that he moved to uh, Ljubljana uh, three years ago. He's 42 and he's got uh, three children and he's got... Um, he works as an advisor for several companies in Slovenia. Um, he's a guy, Google or Robotics, Amazon, Jaguar, Ford, and so on. This guy was, uh, I was told, even one of the founders of Google. Uh, a very, very important person, definitely, who knows scientists, who know a lot about these issues. And the thing is that I was doing an anti-ultra talk that he is already in the, he moved to Slovenia already in 2011. So, you know, the information I would give you that he actively lives and he suggested since 2008. He suggested since 2008 already uh, that he will move to Slovenia. During MT Ultra, it was not even possible for me to determine whether he already is in Slovenia or is not in Slovenia, uh, but it was about that he is with me, that he is in Slovenia, and so on and so forth. Now I see that he moved to Slovenia uh, finally three years ago, which is in 2021, which is 
uh, sort of, uh, I'm going to say, a little bit disgusting. Truly a little bit, very actually, very disgusting in my terms. When I actually found that in 2020, uh, the Google founders, uh, Larry Page and Sergey Mikhailovich Brin and what Larry Page presented me as his son wearing the shirts right there, legalized for Loco 2020. Is this, this his son? I do not know. He claimed me this is his son. The kid participated in MKR for a very long time, uh, calling me idiot, loco crazy, uh, and they're going to give a green light to the idiot. That's me, idiot, loco. Uh, in Spanish, loco means crazy, lunatic. Uh, suggesting me previously already how I'm going to screw the world up with my appearance. It's going to be, everybody's only going to be screwed up and so on. So the Jew doesn't know anything about the torture. The Jew doesn't know anything that the Jew enforced the torture throughout the entire world. Do you know this? Throughout the entire Africa, throughout the entire Asia, throughout entire Russia, Russian Federation, if you like, areas around Russia, throughout the entire Western Europe, Southern America, Central and Northern America, Jew enforced torture. What kind of torture was it? Does not know anything about it. I'm a loco. I'm a loco. So if I would say the Jew is a loco, the Jew created Adolf Hitler, how much would I be wrong from it? How much would I be, from my position, from my point of view, without any court in this world, without any authority, legal authority, having ability to prove me that something is wrong with me, that I'm a racist or anti-Semitic. As Jews like to talk about anti-Semitism, killing Gazan people, Palestinian people that are more Semitic than Jews. Just, we are just an inch away from me starting to claim that you created Adolf Hitler, that you are a creation of the Adolf Hitler, that you are a creation of all the evil in this world. We are just millimeters away from it. In 2020, when posing like this, with this kind of pictures and so on, it is just the last time they're going to humiliate me. They want it to be seen like spitting in my eyes, basically. Hey, here. Here it is. We're going to recognize that it was like this. And for the last time, I'm going to post next to you, laughing at you, and the video recorded and so over there and so on. You know, a Russian Jew or Jew from Russia or American Jew and so on, you know. The issue I have talked about today, the world will start to talk about more and more and more. And you're not going to have nothing in return you're going to be capable to respond to. That's what's eating you right now. I need to update with anything else here in respect to this video? No? Okay. We got this here. Putin will spark World War by claiming Ukraine win. Mm -hmm. um, another version has it that uh, wife from Navalny during MK Ultra, wife of Navalny started to portray herself as a politician once Navalny was gone of the picture. 
And when I was asking about what to expect out of that one, they would give me any kind of in and out. They did not tell anything. The way it ended is with Putin is victory in Ukraine and Navalny, his wife, taking the side against Vladimir Putin due to a loss of his husband, uh, which dragged about one year or something like this, then it all became quiet, meaning that she would be used to select, to pick on, and I told you that Navalny was completely controlled the position of Vladimir Putin. The difference between the Navalny and between the Putin, and this either pro-occupation of Ukraine or work with Western agents, the difference between the two was not. This is just a controlled opposition that was used to cleanse, prepare the terrain either for invasion on Russia or simply to cleanse the Russian ambient of Vladimir Putin is an enemy. This is a co completely controlled individual. Now that Navani is gone of the picture, it will be his wife, and the wife will be cleaning her nose with more and more widows. They will go down the toilet. Any one of you in Russia that will say something and this is that that's fucked. You're going to get fucked one way or the other. This is how it works. Farouz. Unfortunately, this is what it came to. Yes? So. This is how this circus developed, and what can I say? Thank you for uh, watching this video, and as a psychiatrist, Peter Kapsch loved this part. Till the next time, he loved that one the most. For me to properly say goodbye, bye-bye to you, let me demonstrate this gentleman right here. This one, I'm sure you know, this one is well known, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to demonstrate you how this man got to the power. It wasn't only the Germany that Vladimir Putin became a preferred option through the DDR, Deutsche Demokratische Republik. Eastern Germany, basically. I described, I explained to you exactly how, due to corruption issues, how it all worked out, how, why the Germans basically insisted on the same connections they already had in the past. There was somebody else that played extremely important role, and there was somebody else who did best to its abilities to propel this person into the top uh, on the top of the Russian government. This man was not known by the Phantom of Israel, like suggested earlier. I already suggested many other videos, being in 2000 and, uh, I don't know, 16 or whatever. He was known as a Phantom of Tel Aviv. This man, you see right there, was known as a Phantom of the Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is the city is is Israel, the main Ciudad, la capital de Israel, Tel Aviv. Maybe due to so many visits, maybe due to his love for Israel, nobody talks about anymore. What screwed up this individual here, what got him on a picture and what screwed him up today, finally, is this here. I didn't want to release this news about before, about this man here that you see. This here. Vladimir Putin knows him. He knows him very well. The third axis that propelled Vladimir Putin to the presidential seat was none other than Israel. The name of this individual that you see right there was Anatoly Kuntrevich. You see it? This man right here was... What they refer to as the Renamke Ultra Eltra is my accomplice. He became, due to my being extreme anti-Semitic person, when I was young, I didn't even know what the fuck 
Israel. I had no fucking idea. The only thing I really knew about the Israel was about some beautiful lady that played role in, uh, I don't know what was the movie, Vichra Voina or something like that. It was a really sexy girl. Really, really beautiful. And she played some Israeli girl. And that's all the fuck I knew. Uh, till I actually landed well, I mean, there was more to it. In school, I heard that they have, like, the strongest espionage in the world. Um, our school in, in Slovenia, it seemed they adhered to the Israel for some reason. Obviously, they extremely have affiliated themselves to the Holocaust issues. And because of the family... My own family on both sides, I told you, they participated in national resistance. I had no reason really to have any kind of uh, questions about Israel. Do you understand me? I had a questions about the Germans, but I had no questions about Israel. I knew about the Germans that they were out there to question our right to existence. But when it comes to Israel, this is just a country somewhere in the Mideast over there. Um, far away that I did not really burden myself with. What the hell did I have to do with Israel after all? Really nothing. Maybe it was some nice uh, girl that would come along. I'd be interesting in maybe marrying her or something like that. Otherwise, I don't know what the hell I would have with the Israel. This was just myself, really myself. What went on during MK Ultra? No, that's a different thing. I don't even know what the fuck went on during MK Ultra. Israel did a lot of troubles to me. Israel was one of the main factors that determined the course of this case for the worst of the worst. Definitely, since I was little, the Israel had a lot, a lot, nothing other than problems and lies against me. And they were making the whole thing into impossible. I already have dedicated videos to the Israeli. I am. I don't even know how I will explain how I will refer to this disgusting attitude, criminal, beyond criminal, murderous, backstabbing, treacherous attitude. There is no words I possibly could describe this kind of attitude, this, this kind of hyena treachery that I endured from Israel. Impossible really to describe. And so this individual here became my accomplice. You know, the British assigned him to me. The British assigned this guy to me. Why would the British assign him to me? Why would Americans assign him to me? To exterminate people of the Israel, they would do that? I doubt it. Because I was an anti Semite, because I was a fascist, because I was a Nazi during MK Ultra. That's what they created out of me, whatever I was. This man was assigned to me. What about this guy here? Because this guy was uh, blamed for idea that would spend money on helping Syrian government build bio-weapons, bio-weaponry, chemical weapons to destroy the Israel. That's how he suggested me that he, what he would do, that he would go and he would help me, basically, that he would help me. The thing is, during MK Ultra, the recordings can prove I did not understand what the fuck this went was. From me. I didn't understand what the fuck this guy wanted from me in Russia, and I never understood what the fuck Americans and British wanted from me in Syria, where they delivered me as a child. Yeah, it became evident it was espionage, and it was more than espionage. The Israelites, just as Israelites have Americans and British deliver me to the Palestine, to Gaza, to occupied parts 
where they would subject me to the interviews on the street. First, what they would do is they would use me to find people. They would record speakers through the torture. They would use a torture. Yes, first what they did was they would torture me. Then they would deliver me to the Palestine. We're talking about the Israelis on the side, using also Palestinians, certain chosen Palestinians. They would do their job for them. And then once they would spot and they would label certain Palestinian people, maybe not even the Palestinian people, maybe collaborators with the Israel, they would give crazy opinions about the Hitler. They would start to video record the documentary. But that same shit the Israeli Jews did in Syria. And or Russians have used this individual in particular, who even received the money from the British and from Americans. He told them that he doesn't want to be. I remember that much. On a picture with anything that would have to do with weapons against Israel, really. But it was at the request of British that he would take that money and that he would pay, play evil villain. He was supposed to be killed in 2002 on a flight from Aleppo. Aleppo was like a standard location they would deliver me since 1980s. Imagine. Aleppo was like the most, the most, the most popular location. He had like a Syrian girlfriend and that kind of stuff. She would also come to Russia. And the collaboration between Americans, between the British, between the Israelis was so powerful. Russians was so powerful that the Syrian side, the Arab side, would not even understand what really went on. And so what they would do is the Israelis would start to develop the war on Syria and in neighboring countries through the name, in the name of the bioweaponry, chemical weaponry. The biggest uh, Russian arsonist that again existed on the stage, however, was a phantom of Tel Aviv. Phantom of the Tel Aviv was an expert, not only in espionage, but also setting up people. And who knows, maybe even in killing people. Maybe this guy really was killed, dead. If he was killed and dead, then you should know that Vladimir Putin used one to, to propel itself to the top of the Russian government with the assistance of Israel. In other words, that Israel had expressed its deepest belief, support for individuals such as Vladimir Putin. Trust, I should say, so that he could sit in the presidential chair of Russia. The condition for that, whether that was basically to verify, maybe really get this individual killed, I don't know what happened. KGB knows better than what I do. I do not like to, to Yes, especially because this guy was really not a material that would go around and build some kind of, um, he acted deranged, he acted crazy, he tortured me. He was seen, basically, he, he, was, he was sure that I was mentally ill, even that he knew that I did not know what the fuck he was talking about during that period. He wanted to convince me that he is with me, and that he's going to help me out. And even if he already explained me his plans, whatever, in this, in respect to the chemical bioweaponry in Syria, obviously because I wouldn't take one seriously, because I just wanted to be let out free and live basically my life, stop the fucking torture. He believed that I... Uh, sided with something like this and would actually see myself in it. Man, I have no idea what uh, the whole thing was used for because supposedly he was killed. Maybe to give me a warning. They were giving me a warnings about this. I don't know why the fuck you would give me a warning because I really had nothing to do with any of this. What would what, what have anything to do with it? You, 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 you're, you're like fucking insane. I mean, do you know? Do you still remember what type of person is? Educated for it? I struggled to get the fucking education. 
I am not the individual that you see there, or Vladimir Putin, or somebody that the whole state would lay down so that he could walk to his whatever. Handle. Man, I paid with the blood for everything. I would have 10 degrees if it was not for a case like this that deprived me of the right to exist. It was this individual here For some reason, that's also interesting. I find that also fascinating because they relate him to the Novichok. They relate him to this completely fake case here that you see here. These are again Jews. These are again the Jews that were never ever killed, but actually immigrated from the Russia through the Britain, God knows, to Israel, America, whatever the fuck. Wherever the fuck you're hiding. It says Russian doubles. Agent Skripal. Really? You know, Russians are lagging behind the stuff, the shit that is basically piling up around them, around or fucking around without having having any kind of capacity to actually follow up about what's happening. This was again, this people are again Jewish people, from what I recall. You could not make this shit up, man. When you come to London, if you are a Jew, you can actually stand up next to the Royal Guard. And unlike the cases for all other people, you can pull your penis out of your pants and you can pee on one and he will be laughing at you. In, in literally in a sense, as I stated, is it you are some lady from somewhere? God forbid you are somewhere from the Middle East. They're going to fucking kill you. Or a child. You know, guys, you play with this investigation whichever way you want, but there was a number of these people, these so-called spies, that Vladimir Putin supposedly killed in in London, in Britain, whenever they were they were arrive, and it's just somehow, some way, they found their way out through the rear door, through the back door. This here is. For me personally, this stuff here is just, it absorbs my mind, not these people. I don't care about this stuff here. That supposedly would be my bride. This was a bride to be. This individual here it totally, totally absorbs my mind because either that he was used to evaluate Vladimir Putin at Israel's request or Vladimir Putin really terminated him. I don't know, because this was really from the flight, it says right there, took place, it says here, on April 2002 from Aleppo to Moscow. And uh, the circumstances of his death, basically, uh, they are, they're unknown, basically. In unknown circumstances, basically, he died. Right? Whether he was awarded um, a death certificate, a fake death certificate, or whatever the case might be, or really killed. This, what I stated to you, is my account. This, this is as factual as if Bill Clinton, with more factual than if Bill Clinton would give you an account. Bill Clinton's got a long nose anyways. His nose keeps growing. And he's not the only one whose nose keep growing. Because what's interesting is this individual, for instance, I'm just going to give you an example. This is here. This was a this was a chemical weapons commander, you know. 
By the way, I don't understand any of this shit here when it comes to weapons of mass destruction, Syria. Do you guys understand any of it? And it was talk about Iraq, weapons of mass destruction. Do you understand any of it? Do you? I I really do not. I don't understand. I don't understand a fucking thing about any of this stuff here. Look. What is the deal? Israel has registered, uh, what is it here, 90 nuclear bombs? 90 nuclear bombs? These are not weapons of the mass destruction? Since when is it uh, that Israel is more of a statehood than Syria or Palestine or, let's say, Iraq and so on? Well, you know, it is. It is. It is. Because London decided like this. London basically decided that the Israel is the country and the Syria is the fuck all. London basically decided that Israel is a country and a nation and Iraq is a shithole, a fuck hole, and nobody and nothing does not exist. That's basically is since when. What we see here is taking place against the Syrians, Iraq, Palestine, all this Arab. Semitic countries, if you like, it could well be the case with Israel. It could, if London would decide, would be the opposite, would be the contrary to it, it then would be it. However, the oil needs, the petroleum, the colonialism needs dictate something different. As Joe Biden stated, if Israel would not exist, we would have to invent something like Israel, right? Right? We would have to invent one if it would not exist, right? So that basically, this is exactly how you become a terrorist. That's how you, as a Syrian, you become a terrorist, and you don't have the right to the Weapons of Mass Destruction, WMD, or nuclear weapons and so on and so forth. Even Turkey does not have nuclear arsenal. Turkey possesses American nuclear heads, NATO arsenal, but it does not have its own. So do you understand what the difference now, the double dealing, the bullshit, how you basically trade the list and so on? Yeah. I mean, this is how it works. This is basically the reality. We're talking, we're talking about the reality here. Not about a mainstream media that keeps repeating, 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 repeating. Uh, I, I, was, I, I was surprised. I mean, who the fuck is this guy here? Who is this guy here? Kunishevich. Who is this individual here? Who is this guy here? He was not the only one they involved in it. This is not the only guy that they involve in it. Anatoly Konishevich, they associated me with is what I'm trying to say. Do you understand this shit? The British had idea to associate me with whoever was willing to pose as a terrorist, even if he was not a terrorist. And despite my wanting to not to have anything to do with it. So the British needed, you know, this kind of politic next to a sign of me of being mentally ill, the British needed me for something else, basically, right? Vladimir Putin back in the day dreamed about how I would join Al Qaeda, how I would go to Afghanistan and uh, that kind of stuff. He wanted to get me an operation with, uh, with a Libyan Gaddafi and so on. They were eager to get me on board with people that were doing bad stuff to their people and so on. They were dreaming about how they're going to get me on board of that and then destroy me, basically. It seems like that I was a thorn in the heel of this magnificent uh, descendants of uh, this uh, Aryan race, racehood, basically, from London. That I was, there was something that, that I just, it was so troubling that they just, uh, they wanted to associate me with, man, these people are fucking sick. Let's call it what it is. They're sick because they want to be sick. 
They want to be sick. When they see something they don't like, they will associate that with her. Too bad that mirrors exist. So whenever the fuck you go to mirror and you see me, I suggest you just don't see yourself in mirrors anymore. That's going to help you. Because this is what I am. I am a reflection of your violence, of something that you were not capable to deal with, that you have committed, then you have committed yourself to, and you were not able to handle that stuff, and it keeps coming back. And eventually you became a punch back. Douchebags. Who the hell is this guy, this guy here? What is this, huh? Who is this guy here? This was a Russian general. Is that like good enough for you? Russian general, is it is like good enough? To me, when I consider this stuff, from either way, even as a sacrifice, whichever way the Putin uses, it will be enough. It was enough for the Israel to commit itself a trust into the hand of the phantom of Tel Aviv. He only had one teacher, man. And that was the fucking teacher. She took him German language. Phantom of Tel Aviv. The rest of the KGB will know better than I do. They know exactly what happened on that flight from Aleppo to Russia. Right? Am I correct? You're going, you guys are going fucking down. Like you used to sing me, fly on the wall. You are a fly on the wall now. You are flies on the wall now. You're going down like a stones. It was easy when I was with you. It was easy when I kept my mouth shut. So you could see yourself in a mirror and laugh. Now you're going to see how it is when I'm not silent. When I don't see myself in you anymore, and when I'm using whatever you have done to me to deliver you to the ICC, to the International Criminal Court, to the United Nations on a justice, on a trial, now you're going to see how that works out. I think if you don't make it somehow to Moscow, whatever the case might be, my baba will be fucking dead by the new year. No, no, I don't mean to use this like a death threat or something like that. But I will get you arrested. And once you're going to get arrested, trialed, the ten life sentences is not going to be enough. They are going to give you more than 10 life sentences. Here. So that's all I wanted to stress. Maybe the best for the last. You want to you wanna talk about the Novichuk more? You want to talk about Skripals and so on? Go ahead. Like somebody said, make my day. Make my day. This is the guy I mentioned in the video, and I did not mention, did not close properly, did not finish completely about it, so that's not going to be a, some kind of uh, myth or something like this, like, me dreaming about something, I have no fucking clue. Think it over. Next to the Ruski general, Mr. Anatoly Kuntrevich. The British continue to blow, blow, they continue to blow. <laughs> you know? I became a Skripal, and the other one, it was a Novichuk, Artichuk, Novichuk. Chuk chuk, dead here, dead there, dead fucking everywhere. Yes, the Russian chemical bio guru boy, Kuntrevich Anatoliko. It was also 
maestro that shut down the Korean Airlines flight 007. You know, like, like a James Bond. What's your name? I'm a James Bond. I'm a, a Queen Majesty you know, on a mission. James Bond. He too was involved in MK. He was my ally. He was my bro. He was my, how can I, he was my accomplice. I was actually his teacher. I tutored him how to click on that. What is it? MIG-15 or what is it? What was his use as an instrument of kill that shut down the Korean Airlines flight 007, the James Bond? And you see the passenger plane, you squeeze the fucking button. There you go, about 300 down flames. This is specially electric plane. Not just anybody suitable for that kind of stuff. Look at this, how beautiful this stuff is. Look at it. Look at it. Nationality. South Korea, 105 of them. The United States of America, 62 pieces. Japan, 28 pieces. Republic of China, Taiwan, 23 pieces. Philippines, 16 pieces. British Hong Kong, 12. Canada, 8. Thailand, we have a Thailand also, five. Australia, two pieces. United Kingdom, the United Kingdom, two pieces. Dominican Republic, one piece. India, one piece. Malaysia, one piece. Sweden also gave one. And even Vietnam gave me one. Together, 269 pieces, ladies and gentlemen. Look at me. 69 pieces on a joystick, one shot, 269, you go to the history. <laughs> huh? zero, zero, 007, double agent, triple agent, not me. I guess that story about the 007 somehow ends with the main character somehow disappearing of the picture and with the 007 blowing itself up. But not in this case. This mastermind whom I have trained, yes, I was his trainer. I tutored him, I told him, ha <laughs> my boy. There you go. Look at him. Look at him. This is it. This is my baby, right there. Look at it. His name, Gennady Osipovich. Gennady Osipovich is just as fucking evil. From my school he came, just as fucking evil as Anatoly. Same, maybe even worse. Oh, check this out. Yeah, but this this is not a plane. Don't make a mistake about that kind of stuff, right? Don't don't you go there and see this, you know. Gennady. Shit. I was really hoping I'm going to get um, Where is the Gennady? Yeah, we're going to have to skip this stuff here. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot proceed with it. Do you know who was uh, in a service of Her Majesty, the Royal Highness? Do you know who served as a double, double seven, double zero, double zero for sure? Huh? 
Do you know who also served as a double agent? And it would not surprise me that this, this cocky fuck well could be a double agent. So I don't know. Right at this point in time, seeing this picture, going through MKUltra, finding myself tortured by Mr. Milan Kutin. I don't know who this motherfucker is. Milan Kutan, Your Majesty. My name is Milan Kutan, not Milano. Milan. Milan, Your Majesty. I'm really confused. I'm totally confused about it. I, because of this picture now, I started to believe this individual is actually acted like an agent of British, uh, of British Crown. I don't actually know who this guy is, to be honest with you. I don't even know who this guy anymore is, this Milan Kuchan, because of this, because of this issue. I don't like rats. Do you understand? When you live in Germany, you have to live like a German. When you live in Russia, you have to live like a Russian. When you live in America, you have to live like an American. And it doesn't matter where you're coming from. Or don't go there. It goes the same for France and Italy and everything else. One thing is certain, Kuchan is going to pay dearly for this. This is not funny. This sounds maybe like it's funny, but it's not. You know what this is? They are running shoes. It was Milan Kuchan. Remember everybody that was involved? Maybe it sounded even crazy, maybe a little bit. Eh? Don't worry about it. You're safer with me. Than you were with any of your patrons involved in MK Ultra. Or your fucking teachers or your politicians or wherever the hell you have out there. You're safer with me. That's where you actually gain sanity in this program here. Shows that appealed especially to Milan Kuchan are right there. Because these are the kind of shoes I embrace, these are the kind of shoes that I tutored everybody to wear. Milan Kuchan, Borat Pahor, Tanya Fayon, everybody developed certain... And they started to harass people with Pollocks, checks, how they should not wear Adidas, Nike. These are the shoes that I embraced because I, I, I was into athlete, athlete sports. They started to see evil in everything I embraced. Alfa Romeo, it's an Italian car, was a Nazi fascist car. Don't buy it. BMW, a Nazi, a fascist car. Don't buy it. Mercedes Diamond Benz, fascism, Nazism, Deutschland, Hitler made one. Don't buy it. The shoes right there, they look like a Nike. It must be from the school of Sebastian, Bobby Bob. That's basically me. That's how this man here, no, oh, not because of this shit here, he was really qualified, man, became my associate. Now, Milan Kuchan figure out it will be the best to just associate him with me. And that's it. And what's interesting about this man is, this man, believe it or not, acted with the Russians, this is what's interesting about the whole thing. When we go back to Vladimir Putin, 
I don't know how far this ju jury business goes in Russia, but this fighter jet was shot down, literally was shot down. It was time of the Soviet Union when it, this stuff was done. It was literally shot down on behalf of British royals. It was a flight 007 that had international passengers where this plane was actually shot down and people were actually dead? That's a good question. Nobody will ever know. You understand me what I'm saying? How many passengers who was up there? I do not know if any, but it definitely gave everybody a good platform to act against inheritor of the Soviet Union, and that's Russia. So what we have at the present is basically continuation of the politic of Her Royal Highness, Majesty the Queen Elizabeth, and uh, something that some individual who was frustrated in a Soviet Union, with the Soviet Union, who knows who the fuck this guy is, what his roots are, where he's coming from, what, what happened to him, what his issues were. Um, moreover, under whose president this individual served when the plane was actually shut down. This is a fucking horror, yeah. You're gonna say, well, how it can't be. Russian president, 1983. That was a Mr. Gorbachev. Who the hell was it? Uh, Andropov, no. This one here, no. Brezhnev, nuclear war, 1983, Boris Yeltsin, no. I was 12 years old. Yet they wanted to portray this shit. They wanted to portray this thing under my name. It was one of the major accomplishments I made it by getting Russian pilot shut down. Flight which pertained to uh, so many people from abroad, like international people. But basically British were out there to depict me like uh, the worst motherfucker in the history of the world. And so was Central Intelligence Agency. That was at my age 12. It's the shit that continued with British and with Americans for the next 40 years. <laughs> they would continue to insist that I was behind absolutely every crime that existed out there that I, you know, the whole thing obviously turned into something desperate into really, really a schizophrenic element that it became evident that I was not the one also labeled as a paranoid schizophrenic in 2012. Quite contrary, managed to prove that it was the United States of America government. British royals who demanded compliance, global compliance with their schizophrenia with their schizophrenic element, they began to infect, infect the world with. For that reason, Americans British despite the Chinese, and so that's why I also know it's interesting because he meets here the, again with the Vladimir Putin. The two meet. See it? That's Mr. Gennady right there. And once he got a little older and without the sneakers. Made sure they would actually even list Republic of China here next as a Taiwan. I think at the time. China didn't want to have anything to do with this stuff. China did not want to have absolutely anything to do with this stuff. That means that China knew 
that the whole thing was a setup against the Russia. So that you see the countries, the people, the participants that are listed as a list of the victims right there. And of course, I'm going to use that also as a proof that was a fake flight crash with staged, basically, cities here. Is basically when you are Joe Biden and you start to see how the floor are moving under your feet. And it's like deep, deep, deep down, something like Yeltsin, Gorbachev, and all those Russian presidents tested before. And there is nothing underneath, and it's just down and steep. And you got no place to lie anymore. You got all that media, all that CNN. But now the guy, now the child grew up. He's got his own page. And you're fighting the war that is becoming more and more and more less and less credible by the day, by the hour. with whoever the hell you're fighting. I have no idea who you're fighting with. This is the best part about it. We have to find out who Vladimir Putin is. Maybe the next interesting candidate that Americans sacrificed for my case. That was a hell of an interesting guy too. Was Polyakov. I mean, since I... Uh, Since I we, since we touched this issues, weapons of mass destruction. Maybe I should touch him too, because this was yet another well sponsor of my. Um, a teacher of mine, or I will see my student, wherever the hell it was, he was my student. Because everybody, whoever was involved in something fucking bad, he always was my supporter. It always was my supporter. So all my supporter became the Turn Out Throughout NK Ultra. Rapists, serial killers, um, whomever I embraced, he was bound according to the code of Central Intelligence Agency to be depicted by the mainstream media as a rapist, as a killer, as a serial killer, shooter, wherever the hell it was. You know? So it must have been a lot of fake shit Western mainstream media reported. With this was involved in MKUltra. This was a uh, known as a double again as a double agent if there ever was any difference between because they all traded together work together with one another so i don't know the world that is in making this newly opened eastern european area we have to decide about a lot of issues including about mr polyakov uh, in Gennady and about a whole lot of a whole lot of issues that I mentioned today that are pertaining to the so-called World War III. Today, the biggest problem that people fight is the war on their mind without actually knowing the worst part about it, not whom they fight for by whom they're willing to die for and whom they are dying for. Charles stated me that well, we all thanks to the homeless British people. It will be all thanks to the social crisis they created in Britain that they managed to save enough money to save the Ukraine and so on and so forth and so on that we need 
special kind of admission and recognition of for the British for for that reason that this is basically the, this is the way it is and this is this is what we're going to embrace now this is this is the era this is what now this is basically what we live and this is what, what we work for to kill one another practically Nice shoes, eh? I still like them. What's that? 007. Oh, yeah. 007, your majesty. Your highest. Uh, have you seen that commercial where the Queen Elizabeth dropping from the helicopter above the stadium? Did you believe that she was actually asking me when I will accomplish something like the actor? For the James Bond, I'm so sorry to disappoint you. Your Majesty Highness hiding in a toilet, in a rear toilet of the Buckingham Palace, or maybe at your Scottish refuge. Boom.